and welcome to Weather Geeks. I'm Dr. Marshall Shepard from the University of Georgia, and I am honored today to be joined by Congressman Bob Inglis. And you represented the uh, districts in South Carolina. And we're going to have an interesting conversation today because we're going to talk about climate change. Hold on to your seat there. I know it's Twitter's buzzing now. This is a conservative who actually understands and believes the science of climate change. But tell us a little bit about your journey as a congressman and how you've arrived at where you are now. Well, Marshall, you know, for the first six years I represented Greenville, Spartanburg, South Carolina in the Congress, I, I said climate change was hooey, uh, <laughs> Al Gore's imagination. So you were someone that did not really buy into the science of climate change oh, at that point? I, I, absolutely. I, I, had no, I hadn't looked into it at all. All okay. I knew was Al Gore was for it. Okay. Um, and that was the end of the inquiry. <laughs> if you represent uh, as conservative district as I represented, you know, that was the end of the inquiry. Now tell us a little bit, because your district, and I've, I've spoken to you before, you said it's one of the more conservative districts in the nation, and you, what about some of your conservative ratings? Yeah, well, yeah, I had a 93 American Conservative Union rating. Um, 100% Christian Coalition, 100% National Right to Life, A with the NRA, zero with the Americans for Democratic Action, and 23 by some mistake with the AFL-CIO. Yeah. I was really hoping for a zero. Yeah. So, so, um, so you're, you're a conservative, that's the point. Pretty, but yeah, pretty conservative yeah, guy. Yeah, absolutely, and I, and I wanted to establish that because it, you know we'll talk about this more in, after the commercial too, but this has become a left-right issue, but it doesn't have to be. Yeah, but really. talk about the sort of three steps that you that, that you took in this journey from a congressman that thought it was hooey uh, to the point where you are really a, a, a voice for this now. Yeah, so I, I was in Congress for six years and I was out of Congress doing commercial real estate law again in Greenville, South Carolina for six years. And then when I was running again, my son came to me. He's voting for the first time. He just turned 18, so he's the oldest of our five kids. Right. And he told me, uh, Dad, I'll vote for you, but you're going to clean up your act on the environment. Really? And uh, it wasn't a threat. I mean, my son, it wouldn't have been in his economic interest to vote against me, you sure. know what I mean? We were mortgaging the farm. Sure. So uh, he, um, what he was saying was, Dad, I love you. Uh -huh. And you can be better than this. Okay. So come on, let's, let's do this better. Right. So that's step one. Step two is getting on the Science Committee, going to Antarctica, seeing the evidence in the ice core drillings there. No, but I, I know about this trip to Antarctica. I mean, I, I guess it was during your service during, as con a congressman or perhaps a committee or something along, along Correct. those lines. But what did you see that was so compelling there? Well, um, what, what we see in the ice core, you know, is, uh, the South Pole is a desert, you know, gets a quarter of an inch of precipitation a year. Sure. And so it's 10,000 feet above sea level. 5,000 feet of dirt and then 5,000 feet of ice. So in that 5,000 feet of ice, we got an amazing record of the Earth's atmosphere because of the fact that it only gets a quarter of an inch a year. Yeah. And so in that record, you see stability followed by an uptick in CO2 levels coinciding yeah. with the Industrial Revolution. Yeah. I'm not a scientist, but it does <laughs> just make sense to me that you know if I'm burning trees in my fireplace this winter, no big deal, same geological time period. But if I go deep into the Earth, yeah and pull up trees have been going a long time, I'm changing the chemistry of the air, and that's just it leads to the way that physics works on light, yeah. and we get warming. Well, and, and the science says that, but boy, I bet Twitter's lighting up right now yeah. over that response, because there's some that, well, you know, I'm a scientist too, and I'll get, well, you know, that happens naturally, and those types of things. I mean, I, mean, I want to finish the story, but what do you say when you, you have people come up to you and say, well, you know, that's, you know, that happens naturally, and it's happened before, but we, we only started burning fossil fuels, you know, fairly recently. Right, and, and that's why, you know, correlation doesn't mean causation, sure. of course, but you do see this correlation with the rise in temperatures uh, that correlates with the beginning Industrial Revolution. Sure. And um, so, you know, I, I think that it's, it's important to, to really celebrate that science and, and not run from it. I mean, unfortunately, some of my fellow conservatives sort of shrink in science denial and we're, we're, we, I want to talk more about that after the break because we want to get, I want to get into how we got to this left-right perspective on climate change. But yeah. I want to kind of get back to this third step here because apparently yeah. there was also a role for some Australian climate uh, scientists. Aussies, climate scientists, yeah. So uh, first step was my son. Second step was going to Antarctica, the science committee. Third step was, in this metamorphosis for me, was an Aussie climate scientist showing us coral bleaching on another science committee trip. And um, I could tell that he and I shared a world view before any words were shared because 
Uh, you know, St. Francis of Assisi said, preach the gospel at all times. Mm -hmm. If necessary, use words. Sure. And so Scott Heron, this wonderful Aussie climate scientist, was preaching the gospel without any words. Ah, so there's a faith-based element. Yeah, I, I could tell that, that we were worshiping the same God of creation um, without any words. Yeah. And so later we had a chance to talk, and he told me about conservation changes he was making in his life in order to love God and love people. Right. I got right inspired. I decided well, I want to be like Scott, loving God and loving people. So I came home and introduced the uh, Raise Wages, Cut Carbon Act of 2009. I want to pick up on that because you had a, a, a stint in Congress and you were out and then you were back in and then you were back out again. Yeah. Do you think this... That's a nice way to put it on the end, yes. Yeah. <laughs> I was tossed out at the end, well, yes. You've, I've heard you say that. Is it related to how you, your p position pivoted on climate change? Do you think that's the reason? Well, yeah, I'd, I'd committed some other heresies, too. You know, I talked about comprehensive immigration reform. I was uh, for TARP, the, the, the Troubled Asset Relief Program. I, um, and so I had, had some other heresies. But my most enduring heresy was just saying that climate change is real and let's do something about it. Yeah. Voted against cap and trade, thought that was the wrong solution. Right. I now, don't explain to quickly about third second, what do you mean by cap and trade? Because our audience may not really understand it. I know people hear it. It was basically a carbon trading scheme. The concept was to make it so that emitters would have to buy credits. It established some market value for those credits and therefore it'd make it, it behooves somebody to emit less so that they could have value to sell those credits to other people who needed them. Right. Um, so that's the concept, but it got to be a large tax increase that wasn't effectively border adjusted in my view, so that we were gonna hurt American manufacturing. Um, and it was hopelessly complicated. Right. Um, and so I proposed the alternative, which is a revenue neutral border adjustable carbon tax. And I wanna talk about that a little bit later in the show, yep. but I wanna get to a break here. So we, when we get back, the congressman and I are going to talk about this volatile mix of climate change and politics. You won't want to miss this next, but first, our Geek of the Week. This week's Geek of the Week is Dr. Edward Maybach, university professor and director of the George Mason University Center for Climate Change Communication. His research focuses on how to help communities adapt to the unavoidable consequences of climate change. He's an avid runner, loves the outdoors, and his most memorable weather event was a whiteout blizzard near Lake Tahoe. What makes me a weather geek? The fact that I love the weather, especially when it's when it's hit me in the side of the face. I'm gonna ride this one out, guys. Be one of the thousands of weather geeks out there at WeLoveWeather.tv. It's your home. It's everything you've always wanted, and you work hard to keep it that way. Sometimes. Maybe too hard. Get Claim Rate Guard from Allstate. It helps keep your homeowner's rate from going up just because of a claim. Call an Allstate agent first. 888-429-5722. Accident forgiveness from Allstate will keep his rates from going up. Oh, my God. But not his blood pressure. Michael James? Ooh, middle name. Not good. Get accident forgiveness from Allstate and keep your rates from going up just because of an accident. And it starts the day you sign up. So whether it's your car or home, let Allstate help protect your rates. Talk to a local Allstate agent and discover how much more their personal service can do for you. Call 888-429-5722 now. Seven days a week, AMHQ is right here and weather ready. Let me get you ready for the day weather-wise. AMHQ, every morning starting at 5 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 74 degrees under cloudy skies. Today, mostly cloudy. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 76. Tonight, partly cloudy. Low, 67. Winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday, sunshine and clouds mixed. High, 80. Winds north-northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven-day outlook.
as an actor, you can actually help some people in, in a real tangible way. Actor Mark Ruffalo on the next 23.5 Degrees, Tuesday night at 11. Ever since Jim signed up for Lowe's personalized lawn care plan, I've been up on my hind legs trying to get a better view of his grass. It's so beautiful. Oh, cramp, cramp. My tiny unicorn legs can't take it. Now get a $10 gift card when you spend $50 on Select Scott's products. I recommend Nature Made Fish Oil because I trust their quality. They were the first to have a product verified by USP, an independent organization that sets strict quality and purity standards. Nature Made, the number one pharmacist recommended fish oil brand. Hey, pal. You ready? Can you pick me up at 630? Ah. I'm here, I'm here. Too late. I'll go for five minutes. Oh, move it! Killing me! You know what, Dad? I'm good. It may be quite a while before he's ready, but our Subaru Legacy will be waiting for him. The longest-lasting mid-size sedan in its class. The 2016 Subaru Legacy. It's not just a sedan, it's a Subaru. Don't let dust and allergies get between you and life's beautiful moments. With Flonase Allergy Relief, they won't. When we breathe in allergens, our bodies react by overproducing six key inflammatory substances that cause our symptoms. Most allergy pills only control one substance. Flonase controls six. And six is greater than one. Flonase outperforms the number one non-drowsy allergy pill. So you can seize those moments wherever you find them. Flonase six is greater than one changes everything. Hey, need fast heartburn relief? Try Cool Mint Zantac. It releases a cooling sensation in your mouth and throat. Zantac works in as little as 30 minutes. Nexium can take 24 hours. Try Cool Mint Zantac. No pill relieves heartburn faster. Your child is sick. 98 doctors say treat him this way. Two say no, this other is the way to go. I'll go with the two. You're taking a big risk for those kids. That's Congressman Bob Inglis talking about uh, an issue that we're really diving into. And I know, look, I know it's a bit contentious out there. But it doesn't have to. I wanna, how did this become a le Is it because of Al Gore? If, if he'd done the movie with uh, John McCain, would we be here right now talking about the politics of climate change? Is it Al Gore's fault? Uh, well, I, I surely don't think he meant it to be that way. You know, he didn't get set out to uh, make it a partisan issue, but somehow it happened that way. Right. Maybe also because it was connected to the UN and the climate panel, you know, it sort of sounds like one world government. And so conservatives that, don't like that. That's a that's a bad uh, introduction sure. to the topic. Sure, and because it's it's really baffling. Because you know, to be clear, you're here as a conservative on climate change, but there are others. I mean, I've heard Hank Paulson talk about this. Yeah. I've heard Christy Todd Whitman talk about this. So this, it, there are a lot of people out there, but yet. Right. It's still framed as if this is a liberal or a left issue. Uh, how do we get past that? Well, we need uh, the folks you've just mentioned, plus people like Secretary of State George Schultz, Ronald Reagan, Secretary of State, um, Art Laffer, Ronald Reagan's economics advisor, uh, for example, who uh, there are a number of conservatives who will stand with us and say, you know, it only makes sense to be conservative here, to not proceed in the face of this risk that I was just talking about in that clip as though there's no risk. Yeah. That's inherently unconservative. Right. It's, in fact, the most unconservative thing I can think of is to just proceed pell-mell in the face of this risk rather than say, wait a minute, could we, in George Schultz terminology, buy an insurance policy? Now, it's got to be affordable. Sure. We've got to make sure we don't tank the economy. And that's the key to this revenue neutrality part, is to make sure that we're not growing the government. Sure. If, if this is a scheme to grow the government, I'm out. Right. And if, if this is a scheme to fix a problem in an efficient economic way, it actually grows the economy. We're very much in. Now, when you use analogies like we just heard there in that intro, or you try to talk to, again, the base that you primarily interact with, mm -hmm. how is it, I mean, are you, is it, one of the big, questions I have is even if we disagree, now we've had people on this show that I disagree with. We are, Our good friend Joe Bastardi has been on the show, a good yeah. friend of mine, but we disagree on some of this, hey Joe? But one yeah. of the things that I want to talk about here is why is there the vitriol, the hate, when someone disagrees with someone else on this issue? Where does that come from? 
Yeah, it, it really is sort of mystifying, isn't it? I think it has to, it really has to do with this team notion or tribal concept that's just not our tribe, not our team. Our team is for free enterprise and no growth of government. Well, yeah, that's our, we are that team. Right. And we believe that you can fix climate change that way, using a smaller government, making sure not to grow it, but to fix the problem of economics that has an environmental consequence. The environmental left starts this, this is a, this is an environmental problem we gotta solve and regulate down. Well, no wonder conservatives don't like that. But what we say is, you know, this is a problem of economics. Right. You fix the numbers, the economics numbers, and the, the environmental problem will take care of itself. 20 seconds. Tell, what is Republican? I know we're going to talk yeah. a little bit more about it, but introduce it here before this yeah, next so break. Republican.org, Republican.org, uh -huh. is this um, gathering of conservatives to say we're ready to step forward with a solution on climate. Yeah. We, we want to stop shrinking in science denial. It's not us to shrink in science denial. It's us to be the people of good data who step forward with concrete solutions. And that's a good segue because when we come back on Weather Geeks, I'm going to talk to the congressman about some of those solutions. And some of them you might think are controversial. We're here next on Weather Geeks. It's spring. Time to cook out. No, way out. It's time to get inspired, get advice, and get coolers. Because we gotta get cooking, catching, and ooing. And then do it all again next weekend. Cabela's Spring Great Outdoor Days, the biggest sale and event of the season. Get 25% off Cabela's five-piece cast iron starter set. In store and online now. Welcome to Long John Silver's, home of our new $5 real deal box. Dive into our wild-caught 100% Alaskan whitefish, natural cut fries, hush puppies, dessert, and a drink. It's our $5 real deal box. Because at Long John Silver's, you deserve more. Square is kind of like me, just plain and simple. We pay 2.75%, whether it's Amex, Visa, MasterCard, you can take them all. The Square Reader makes the transaction so much easier and so much quicker. The other thing I like is how fast money is in your account. I mean, it's right away. That's probably one of the best moves I've ever made in business. Accept all major credit cards with Square and get your money fast. Get started free at Square.com. Ace is the place with the helpful hardware, folks. I just want to know for sure that I'm going to like the paint color once it's up. I told Kelly we have color samples so she could try a little bit of it on her wall first. Ace is the place for a taste before you buy the whole meal. That's a metaphor. Don't eat paint. You make it sound easy. <laughs> it Wish is. me luck. Good luck. Find your perfect color with sample pints from the paint studio at Ace. Get a coupon for $5 off a gallon for every sample you buy. Only at Ace, the helpful place. Ground, weeknights at 6, on the weather. Great time for a shiny floor wax, no? Not if you just put the finishing touches on your latest masterpiece. Timing's important. Comcast Business knows that. That's why you can schedule an installation at a time that works for you, even late at night or on the weekend if that's what you need, because you have enough to worry about. I did not see that coming. Don't deal with disruptions. Get better internet installed on your schedule. Comcast Business, built for business. Welcome to Strength and Performance from Cub Cadet, the proven innovator of award-winning zero-turn riders. Welcome to efficient zero-turn performance with the ease of steering wheel control and an advanced cutting system delivering beautiful results every time. Welcome to Strongsville. Experience the strongest lineup of zero turns in the business. Visit your local Cub Cadet dealer today, where you'll find exceptional financing for a limited time. Seven days a week, AMHQ is right here and weather ready. Let me get you ready for the day weather-wise. AMHQ, every morning starting at 5 on the Weather Channel. Climate, environment, science, weather, technology, they're the topics of our lives right now. So let's talk about them. 
Every day you get to accept things as they are or take responsibility for changing them. The people of Flint, Michigan, it's like we don't matter. It's such a real issue that's right in front of us. We get to change the course of history. Let's have a conversation. And together, we can solve these things. 23.5 degrees, Tuesday nights at 11 on The Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 75 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, considerable cloudiness. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High, 76. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 67. Winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour. Monday, partly cloudy skies. High, 80. Winds north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. back on weather geeks and I off off camera I just uttered a word that really might have made you a little uncomfortable <laughs> except it doesn't make you uncomfortable the word T A X tax now you really talk about the, the notion of a carbon tax is that right yeah you and had what to, is that you had to bring up that bad word Ta didn't yeah. you Marshall but no, we uh, probably yeah stick with us but, here. Go yeah. but the key to it is the words that come before it what we're for is a revenue neutral border adjustable Carbon tax. Border. Now, I think people get the revenue neutral part. What right. What do you the, mean the, by border adjustable? Revenue neutral, of course, means we can cut taxes somewhere else so there's no growth of government. Right. If there were a growth of government, we're out of this deal, sure. right? Uh, but border adjustment means that you've got to figure out some way of getting China and other countries in on this deal. Sure. If not, then this is really a non-starter. Right. We, we've got to make it so that, so that when people are importing to our country, they pay the same as if it had been made here. Um, now, there's a question whether that can work in the World Trade Organization, but we think it can. Right. We can win the argument there. If so, then we think that China would follow suit and very quickly adopt the same policy. And then the whole world would follow that policy. Right. Because right. we were acting, the Chinese were acting. And so the result would be that energy would go to its truer cost, not an artificial high, but just its truer cost with all the cost in gotcha. on all the fuels, even biblical accountability for all your emissions. Then you fix the market distortion and the free enterprise system can deliver innovation. Right now, it can't deliver innovation without props for this fuel or that fuel because the economics aren't right. Now, I want to, something that I've often read that Upton Sinclair said, and I want to put it to you and then get your response. He said that it's difficult to get a man to understand something when his salary depends on him not understanding it. <laughs> That's very true. Now, with that context, is the debate the contentiousness about these solutions and not the science, or are they hand in hand? Because yes, there's some uncertainty with the science, but there's a lot of usable information in the science too. But do you feel that the, these carbon taxes and things you're talking about, is that where the, the contentiousness is? Yeah, I think that it's, it's a sense, um, that we, we've got to overcome a number of problems. That one of them is the sense that, uh, that, that we're the slow kids, the dumb kids in the class, the last ones to get it. If, if that's the case, and that's what we're being told by people who, who posit themselves as more informed, uh, smarter than we are, that's a bad setup, sure. you know, then, um, but rather if we could say, listen, the science isn't settled, science is never settled, it's always being discovered, sure. but the science clearly indicates risk. Now, what are we going to do in the face of that risk? Right. Like I said earlier, proceed pell-mell, there's, no, there's no risk, well, that's pretty unconservative. Yeah. Rather, what's better is to say, no, we got risk, we got a way to fix it that's exciting, that actually involves more energy more mobility, more freedom all around the world. Right. Distributed energy systems popping up in places that are currently dark at night. Right. Those people enjoying the light, joining the world community and producing more, 
this is, a, this is a very exciting opportunity, and if you think about it, a way to make money, too, because we can sell these systems to those folks, serve our customers, make money. Now, in this final minute, tell us a little bit about how people can find the organization that you mentioned earlier. How can they get involved? Because it's not an anomaly to be a conservative and understand that climate is a risk, are you saying? So how, how can people get involved? Correct. If they go to our website, they'll see that. They'll see just many faces of people, actual people, that have signed up with us, and we invite your your viewers to sign up at Republic. And these are conservatives. Right, yes, and we, it's republicen.org. Okay. And so the idea is to go there and it takes only about two minutes, upload a picture of yourself, we wanna see your smiling face, and um, we'll put a little bit of information about you and you can tell us why you're in on energy ah. and the environment and solving this problem okay. with free enterprise. Thank you so much for joining us. We have to end it right there. And as usual, we are here every Sunday at noon on Weather Geeks, and you can also find us on Twitter, uh, WXGeeksTWC, and we also have a Facebook page. We'll see you next week on Weather Geeks. If you have moderate to severe rheumatoid arthritis like me, and you're talking to a rheumatologist about a biologic, this is Humira. This is Humira, helping to relieve my pain and protect my joints from further damage. This is Humira, helping me reach for more. Doctors have been prescribing Humira for more than 10 years. Humira works for many adults. It targets and helps to block a specific source of inflammation that contributes to RA symptoms. Humira can lower your ability to fight infections, including tuberculosis. Serious, sometimes fatal infections and cancers, including lymphoma, have happened as have blood, liver, and nervous system problems, serious allergic reactions, and new or worsening heart failure. Before treatment, get tested for TB. Tell your doctor if you've been to areas where certain fungal infections are common, and if you've had TB, hepatitis B, are prone to infections, or have flu-like symptoms or sores. Don't start Humira if you have an infection. Talk to your doctor and visit Humira.com. This is Humira at Work. You do all this research on a perfect car, then smash it into a tree. Your insurance company raises your rates. Maybe you should have done more research on them. For drivers with accident forgiveness, Liberty Mutual won't raise your rates due to your first accident. Liberty Mutual Insurance. This is a moisture meter. And these few drops are like an oasis to a colony of termites. To catch a pest, you have to think like a pest. Not just in any home, in your home. A lot went into perfecting new Quaker breakfast flats. We gathered, measured, mixed, and tasted. Because a lot goes into Quaker breakfast flats. Tart cranberries, crunchy almonds, sweet bananas, toasted pecans, golden raisins, baked in with our wholesome oats. Help satisfy your morning hunger with every single bite. Introducing our newest creation, Quaker breakfast flats. Incredible bladder protection from Always Discreet that lets you move like you mean it now comes with an incredible promise. The Always Discreet Double Your Money Back Guarantee. Always Discreet is for bladder leaks and it's drier than poise. Try it. We're so confident you'll love it. We'll give you double your money back if you don't. Incredible bladder protection. Double your money back guarantee. That's Always Discreet. Nights at 6 on the Weather Channel. Currently in our area, 75 degrees under mostly cloudy skies. Today, considerable cloudiness. A stray shower or thunderstorm is possible. High 76. Tonight, partly cloudy, low 67. Winds northeast at 10 to 15 miles per hour.
Monday, partly cloudy skies. High 80. Winds north northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Here's our seven day outlook. We know you have a morning routine. We have one too. Seven days a week, AMHQ is right here and weather ready. Let me get you ready for the day weather-wise. We've got a lot going on this morning. Definitely see what kind of pattern we've had. So start your morning routine with Jim Cantori, Stephanie Abrams, Jan Carfagno, and the rest of AMHQ. It is a team here at the Weather Channel and an awesome team at that. Let's get right to what you want, and that is the weather. AMHQ, every morning starting at 5 on the Weather Channel. Every day you get to accept things as they are or take responsibility for changing them. The people of Flint, Michigan, it's like we don't matter. It's such a real issue that's right in front of us. Climate, environment, science, technology. Let's have a conversation. And together, we can solve these things. 23.5 degrees, Tuesday nights at 11 on the Weather Channel. Now on 23.5, foods you love are disappearing daily from our planet. If there's enough to eat, should we even care about food variety? And he's the first black U.S. senator from New Jersey, and he's taking on toxic waste cleanup. You'll also hear what his mother said to him when he was sworn into Congress. And 2015 is the biggest year for shark attacks in the U.S. ever. But don't blame the sharks just yet. All that and more next on 23.5. We've all heard about animals being on an endangered list, but what about foods? Food like chocolate, bread, coffee, maybe even wine. All are under assault and in danger of disappearing. Does that sound impossible? Well, it's true, according to Simran Seti, author of a new book that says 95% of the world's calories, all of our calories, come from just 30 plant and animal species. 30, and that number is dwindling. So what does this mean? The name of the book, is bread, wine, and chocolate. But it's not the book that you would expect. You're talking about how we're losing some of these things. I was in Italy doing research for a completely different subject around food, and researchers kept saying to me, what we're concerned about is the loss of agricultural biodiversity. I didn't know what they were talking about. I went to the grocery store, it looked like we had aisles of choice. Well, what we're losing is diversity within the foods that we eat. We're, we're shrinking down the kinds of foods that we eat, the varieties of foods that we eat, and it creates a really perilous food system. An investment person wouldn't ever say to us, hey, listen, Sam, here's how to secure your, your financial future. Put everything into two stocks and keep your fingers crossed. But that's exactly what we're doing to, in food. We're moving toward a global trend of what researchers now call the global standard diet. What researchers an, who analyzed 50 years of data on what 98% of the world eats learned is that the global trend right now is toward wheat, rice, corn, soybean, and palm oil. Where effectively, 95% of our food comes from just 30 species. Three fourths of our food comes from 12 plant and five animal species. And that creates a treacherous way to ensure food for the future. I pick a lot of different coffees. I am a coffee consumer. Mm -hmm. but when I, Right, connoisseur maybe. Right. And when I went and looked at all the different brands of coffee I had, I pulled them off the shelf to look at them, and they're Arabica. Now there are, what, should be hundreds if not thousands of different coffee beans that are grown on the planet, but you make the case that Arabica is the coffee that consumers are given right. in different brands. So it, there's no incentive for growers to grow the other beans. So those beans, those plants are being lost. When we look at coffee, there are two primary species of coffee that we look at, Arabica and Robusta, Caffea conifera and Caffea arabica. Um, and almost every variety that we taste comes from these yeah. two species. Coffee leaf rust has wiped out huge swaths of Arabica. That's why Honduras and Guatemala have actually declared states of emergency. We don't see it. As coffee consumers, we're going to our coffee shops and we think everything's okay. And it's happening to, what, just about every kind of food? Every food is compromised by this. And I'll use another example. When I went to the grocery store, the largest grocery store in the United States is Walmart now. And 90% um, of dairy products that are on store shelves come from exactly one breed of cow, the Holstein Frison. Now we use Use that breed because it's a it's a high yielding dairy cow. Right. So it makes sense on one level. But what happens if that one variety, that one breed of cow, succumbs to a disease? 
90% of our dairy products come from that one animal. So what, why does that make sense? You know, and in, in, in truth, it doesn't. But we have ways. That would be ways. an immediate consumer nightmare. What's happened is we, of course, we want to um, create foods that are abundant, right? We want to grow foods that have a high yield. But what we've increasingly moved toward in our industrialized food system is growing everything in monoculture for efficiency. We see it with the, the Cavendish banana, right? That's a variety of banana that we see on store shelves. We have the ability in the world to grow thousands of varieties of bananas. We see exactly one. That's because it's one. <laughs> It ships really well. It's you know it's shelf stable. It sits there for a long time. It does does a good job. It's not the most delicious banana. It's not the most d nutritious banana. It's the one that travels well, and that's the one that replaces what used to be the one banana on store shelves, which was known as the Big Mike or Gross Michel banana. So what we're doing is we're kind of one step ahead of this when it comes to the Cavendish banana we see on store shelves now. Plant geneticists haven't figured out what the next iteration of banana will be that will replace this one because right now that banana is succumbing to the exact same fungus that had compromised the banana that preceded it. One of the ways we can solve this problem is to grow a diversity of crops so we actually have backup systems in place. I got a thousand questions and I can't like fire them all out at one time. How do first world and even second world consumers get involved in saying, I want more choice. There are three different ways of primarily solving agricultural biodiversity. We save wild places where these crops and their wild relatives are grown, or a breeze of animals. We save it in situ on farms. So anytime you go to a farmer's market and you see, say, an heirloom tomato, right. that's in situ conservation on farm. But conservationists hadn't considered what we could do, we, the eaters and the drinkers. <laughs> and so what I propose, and what a, a, you know, a number of great people are proposing, is we save it by savoring it. We save it by eating it. We save it by drinking it. We save it by being the eating and drinking public demanding it exactly what you're saying and the way we can do that is go to the farmers market look for diverse varieties of things that you haven't seen before or even just do a pivot in the grocery store and make slightly different choices to ensure we have diversity in the future